morning everybody. Here's a little video of me. It's rude to put hats on the table. Sorry. Is this your hat? Yeah. Children. It's a lovely day here in Argentina. Está en una habitación que, que tiene balcón y bueno, estamos un poco con temor de que haga algo que Tonight, ABC News has learned a toxicology report revealing former One Direction singer Liam Payne had a mixture of drugs in his system when he fell to his death from a third floor hotel balcony in Buenos Aires. Authorities say they found traces of the party drug pink cocaine in his system, along with other drugs. Police previously releasing pictures showing drugs found inside his room, along with a smashed TV. When you see someone that you haven't seen for ages and you become the same person you were when you were with, I don't know, it's very interesting. It's a feeling Liam Payne's loved ones won't experience again, as those who knew him best continued to mourn the star after his sudden death. Probably one of those life-changing moments that, that saved my life in a way, and without it, I wouldn't have, you know, I went through a lot, don't get me wrong, but to actually arrive where I am here today and where I hope we're gonna go forward together, it could be one of those makers or breakers. It was tough to read some of the stuff online. I think thick skin's quite fake. We have some heartbreaking news that has shocked the world of music and fans across the globe. In a tragic turn of events, new footage has surfaced revealing Liam Payne's final message before his passing. His last words, haunting and prophetic, seem to eerily predict the tragedy. I'm going to die. The former One Direction star's final words would not only give us a glimpse into his mental state before this unimaginable loss, but they've also left fans asking, how could this have been prevented? Stay tuned as we dive deeper into this shocking footage, unravel the timeline leading up to his tragic demise, and explore how Liam's emotional struggles came to light in his final days. It's a story that has left millions heartbroken and wondering what really happened. Just enjoying coffee and breakfast, even though it's like 1 p.m. Literally, we sleep in every day until at least 12. We're such losers. No. No? <laughs> there's, there's some stuff that I've definitely like never, never spoken about to do with it. It was really, really, really severe. And it was a problem. And, and, and it was only until I saw myself after that I was like, right, I need to fix myself. Mm. There was like a few pictures of me on a boat and I'm all like bloated out and I call it pills and booze face. And I was like this, like my face was just like 10 times more than it is now. All right, all right, all right. I think we know what's coming next. Now, if you're like me and you've got ADHD, then you will not pack your suitcase until you absolutely have to. Okay, I am in the middle of packing my suitcase. I got about 30 minutes to be out of this joint quick, fast. But if you have ADHD, you will not pack until there's an absolute emergency and you feel the need that you have to pack for those green lights. It hurts a lot. It's, it's very, um, it's very tough to do. But we're uh, enjoying ourselves here at our lovely friend Gordon's house. Shout out, shout out gone wherever gone gone is. Shout out gone. Shout out gone. Big bad gone. Um, yeah, so it's gonna be a nice day. And then you're going home. Ha ha loser with I'm headed back to Florida. After Liam Payne's heartbreaking demise, people are closely examining recent interviews with his ex-fiance, Maya Henry, for any signs of his mental state. The police have not yet determined if his passing was an accident or intentional, but reports of a 911 call about Payne's disruptive behavior have fans searching for any hints about his actions leading up to his passing. I just didn't like myself very much, then I made a change. And the same thing happened this year with, with, with that sort of thing as well. But the problem we had in the band, and I don't blame anybody for this, I don't want to seem like I'm whining or moaning, mm. oh my God, look at my life, whatever. But it feels to me like when we were in the band, the best way to secure us because of how big it got, was just lock us in our rooms. And of course, what's in the room? Mini bar. Mm. So at a certain point I thought, well, I'm gonna have a party for one. And that just seemed to carry on throughout many years of my life. And then you look back, how long you've been drinking and stuff, you're like, Jesus Christ, that's a long time. Even for someone who's, you know, as young as I was. 
Henry, who ended her engagement with Payne in 2022 over cheating allegations, revealed on the Internet is Dead podcast that Payne often spoke about his own demise. She also accused him of using manipulative tactics. Just last week, Henry took legal action by sending a cease and desist letter claiming Payne had been persistently reaching out to her and her family. What exactly did Payne say to Henry before he passed away? Did he foresee what was going to happen? But it was like the only way you could get frustration out in the day or being in tra- like trapped. And, and, you know, I spoke about to somebody about this and, and, and in child development, you know, as a teen, the one thing you need is, is freedom to make choices and freedom to do stuff. And it was the one thing that, although we could do anything we wanted, it seemed from the outside that we were always locked in a room at night and then it would be car, hotel room, stage, sing, locked. Liam Payne's last words before passing. Henry went into details on the podcast, talking about how Payne kept messaging her after their breakup, explaining how messages were a variation of, oh, I'm not well, and adding that he would always play with death and be like, well, I'm going to die. I'm not doing well. Maya Henry recalled a time where she tried to get Liam Payne help, but he refused it. She mentioned that his behavior became a pattern. He would often text her mom saying things like, I'm not doing well. Have Maya contact me because Henry wasn't responding to him. Do you know that Liam Payne's ex-girlfriend, Maya Henry, has just released a book allegedly based on their relationship and there is a lot of dark stuff in there. The book is called Looking Forward and it's not even subtle, the references to Liam Payne that are even on the cover. Like if you look at the guitar, it says 5F, which is like a variation of 1D, One Direction. This sign says James Street and James is Liam Payne's middle name. And in the book, the main character Mallory is pressured by her boyfriend to have an abortion. Maya actually told people.com, if it were up to me, I wouldn't have done it. But then also, if I were to have made a different decision, then I would have lost the person that I loved. In May, Henry released a book called Looking Forward, based on real life events. One part of the book suggests that Payne had once reached out to Henry's mom saying, I'm not going to be around much longer. Henry took this seriously, which she emphasized in the podcast. She explained that she doesn't take talk of passing away lightly, and that if someone says something like that, she will always try to help, no matter what they've done. However, she felt that Payne had taken advantage of her family's kindness. How is Maya? She's right? Question mark. Are you right? I'm right. It says, it says, how's Maya? She's right. Does that make me left? Are you right? I'm alright. She can confirm she is right. Show me Maya. Okay. There she is. Henry also expressed deep concern about Payne's mental health saying it had gotten so much worse, though she didn't go into specifics, possibly due to legal reasons. She did recall him apologizing for everything he had done and saying he couldn't live with himself while still continuing to hurt her. I was having a drink and then I was like, you know what, this just isn't serving me at all. I don't really need this right now. It's the first time I've ever put a drink down and gone, someone asked, yeah, you finished that. I don't need it. And I haven't picked one up since, which has almost been six months, which I'm excited about. It's good. It's good to be in this position. And then, yeah, I definitely don't need those things anymore. The party's over. I just need to take a little bit of time out for myself, actually, because I kind of became somebody who I didn't really recognize anymore. Liam Payne had been open about his struggles with addiction during his One Direction days, and Maya Henry remembered trying to get him into rehab. She often worried about his lifestyle, feeling that something bad could happen. She shared how she would think to herself that if she didn't try to help him, she wouldn't be able to live with herself if something happened. Despite her efforts, Henry realized that it was up to Payne to help himself. Maybe we should have done this, babe. Should we have sang this song instead? (laughs) (laughs) She's got a Grinch mug. Oh, they got a puppy. Henry has not yet commented publicly on Payne's demise. His other ex, Danielle Pizer, shared that she had received a message from him a couple of weeks before he passed, where he expressed his happiness for the family she had built with her husband and daughter. Pizer said she would cherish that message forever. His ex, Danielle Pizer, now revealing the final message she received from Liam just before he died. Danielle shared old photos with the late singer alongside a lengthy message writing, A couple of weeks ago, he expressed his happiness for the love she found with her partner Sonny and daughter Mia. 
adding, it's something she'll cherish forever. Payne was in Argentina to attend a Niall Horan concert when he tragically fell from a hotel balcony in Buenos Aires' Palmero neighborhood. Argentine authorities have stated they will perform an autopsy and investigate the circumstances surrounding his tragic passing. All right, all right, all right. I think we know what's coming next. Now, if you're like me and you've got ADHD, then you will not pack your suitcase until you absolutely have to, okay? I am in the middle of packing my suitcase. I got about 30 minutes to be out of this joint quick, fast. But if you have ADHD, you will not pack until there's an absolute emergency and you feel the need that you have to pack for those green lights. Yeah. Proud of them. The house is a mess. I'm a mess. I don't mind saying it. A fan named Rebecca told the Daily Mail that she had a 30-minute chat with Liam Payne in the hotel lobby where he talked about his days in one direction. According to her, Payne jokingly said, I used to be in a boy band. That's why I'm so messed up. Until about an hour before news of his demise broke, Payne had been posting videos of what seemed like a fun and relaxing vacation in Argentina. You're going home, ha ha, lose a weirdo. I'm headed back to Florida with Nala. Yeah. I hope everybody was okay in, in, in uh, Milton as well. By the way, it was quite, it's quite a scary thing to watch from far away. I hope everybody was okay. And all the little dogs and everything made out as well. There's some quite sad stories about dogs. Um, obviously, we're going to go home and see our dog. Our dog? Nala. Noonie. Chooch. What else do I call her? Nala. No, that's what you call her. Oh, yeah. I call her really random names. I make up a lot Choo-chi. of random names. Choo-chi. Choo-chi. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with Nala. <gasps> Musicians and fans are now grieving the sudden and heartbreaking loss of Liam Payne on Wednesday, October 15th. Despite the tragic outcome, just hours before, he was sharing moments from what appeared to be a beautiful trip. An hour before news of his demise broke, Payne was sharing now-deleted Snapchat stories from his trip to Buenos Aires with his girlfriend, influencer Kate Cassidy. Lovely day in Argentina, he said in a selfie-style video from the hotel breakfast table, looking relaxed and happy as he playfully called out Kate for leaving a hat on the table. Children, he jokingly muttered in the clip. It's a lovely day here in Argentina, he continued showing a gorgeous view of a grassy backyard, palm trees, and blue skies. This is the breakfast table, just enjoying coffee and breakfast even though it's 1 p.m. Kate then chimes in, Literally, we sleep in every day until at least 12. We're such losers. Here's a complete look on the Snapchat video. Morning, everybody. Here's a little video of me. It's rude to put hats on the table. Sorry. Is it your hat? Yeah. Children. A lovely day here in Argentina. I'm just eating an orange. Just enjoying coffee and breakfast, even though it's like 1 p.m. Literally, we sleep in every day until at least 12. We're such losers. No. No. <laughs> Payne's final Snapchat story was a mirror selfie posing alongside his girlfriend, both wearing swimsuits. Kate has yet to publicly share a statement on Payne's passing. The couple began dating in October 2022. The posts were also not filmed in a hotel, with Payne saying that they had been staying at their lovely friend Gordon's house, the pair joking about how late they are having breakfast at around 1 p.m. local time. Payne also spoke to the camera about his polo plan, saying, Hey, we ride. Um, we're going to ride some horses. I think I'm going to be playing polo again, which is going to put me out of action for about six weeks. Honestly, polo, out of everything I've ever done sports-wise, not that I'm, like, taking a polo professionally, by the way, I'm just, like, I had to go for for, for some fun. Um, it's so hard to do, number one. Number two, my back and my neck from swinging that hammer around. Or mallet, I think it's called, if you're right in the notes. Polo language. Um, yeah, 
it hurts a lot. It's, it's very um, very tough to do. But we're uh, enjoying ourselves here at our lovely friend Gon's house. Shout out, shout out Gon, wherever Gon, Gon is. Shout out Gon, big bad dog. Um, yeah, so it's going to be a nice day. Payne showed the views from his friend's house overlooking fields and trees. The post also included images of the couple posing together and a video of Payne walking around saying, I look like the Joker. My hair's a bit cray cray. One post also featured Cassidy and their dog watching TV, with Payne asking fans to write a caption for him. Now, as mentioned earlier, Danielle Pizer, Liam Payne's ex-girlfriend, recently opened up about the last message she received from him before his passing. In a heartfelt Instagram post on Sunday, October 20th, Pizer looked back at their time together as a couple and shared a touching message Payne had sent to her about her family. Receiving a message from you a couple of weeks ago expressing your happiness for the love I found with Sonny and Mia is something I'll cherish forever. She wrote referring to her partner Sonny J and their daughter Mia. Danielle says his death doesn't feel real. Despite being aware of your struggles over the years, I hoped and prayed that this day would never come. But now we're all facing the reality of living life without your presence. Liam Payne first met Daniel Pizer back in 2010 when he was a contestant on The X Factor, and she was a backup dancer on the show. The two ended up dating for over two years. Elsewhere in her message, Pizer wrote of Payne, his most important role and something he was the most proud of out of all of his monumental success was that he was a father. Liam and Danielle met in 2010 on The X Factor. He was competing as part of One Direction. She was a backup dancer. The thought that there is now a child growing up without one of their parents is heartbreaking and unfair. She continued, to Liam's son Bear, as well as his parents and sisters, my love, thoughts and strength goes to you. The magnitude of this loss is incomprehensible, and I will continue to support you in any way I am able to. Pizer next shared a statement addressed directly to the One Direction alum, where she used his initials LJP and wrote that his life's end still doesn't feel real. Best part about being a dad is when they look at you. And it feels like they're not just like they don't just look at you, they like look into your soul. Like they look they look like right through you and you're just like Simon says Liam's son Bear, whom he shared with singer Cheryl Cole, has his dad's smile and that twinkle in his eye. He will be so proud of everything you achieved and how you achieved it. Have you ever just look at someone and say, So this is what love looks like? The dancer shared that even though she knew about Payne's struggles over the years, she always hoped this day wouldn't come. Now everyone has to face life without him. She added that while many people say, I hope he knew how much I cared, she certain Payne knew how she felt. They were always very honest with each other, even when it was hard to hear. Danielle Pizer reflected on her time with Liam Payne, saying that although she once called him her favorite person in the whole world, they often had their differences when they were together. She admitted that he could frustrate her, and she likely annoyed him too at times. Danielle says she once called Liam her favorite person in the whole world. He could also wind me up so much, and I probably annoyed the hell out of you sometimes too. I don't really think it's ever something you could you could ever have, have thought of really. I mean, when, when we finished the show, we thought something might happen, but never anything like this. The two called it quits in 2013, but Danielle says that seemed to be just the start of our story. The things we went through and experienced from then all the way until last year could be described as unique to some and misunderstood by others. But I think deep down, we always knew we'd have some sort of connection forever, no matter where our individual lives took us. Pizer explained that over their 14 years of knowing each other, they learned to accept these things. They might have disagreed on a lot, but they always managed to support each other when needed and would laugh off their disagreements shortly after. Although their relationship ended in 2013, Pizer felt that this was just the beginning of their story. She shared that their experience since then, up until last year, were unique and sometimes misunderstood by others. But deep down, she believed they always knew that they would have some sort of connection, no matter where life took them. Daniel Pizer reflected on how it took Liam Payne a bit longer to figure out who he wanted to be to find his true happiness. She noted that while most people spend their teenage and young adult years discovering themselves, Payne spent those years giving more to the world than he needed to. She wished he had known that he was always enough, without feeling the need to play a role just to make others happy. Pizer also expressed her gratitude to Payne for teaching her the importance of setting boundaries and protecting her heart. 
In closing, she shared her sadness that his story didn't have a different ending and that he didn't get the chance to share more of his unique qualities with the world. She ended her letter with, Rest easy, my friend. Peaser previously posted a brief tribute to the late singer on Saturday, October 19th. Over the last few days, I've been trying to process the news of Liam's demise, she wrote on her Instagram stories. Thank you to anyone who has taken the time to call, text, or DM, sending condolences and offering support. It's helped more than you know. Apart from Peaser, another one of Liam Payne's close friends is speaking out about their final conversation before the One Direction singer's tragic passing. We've been friends for many years, and he was away yesterday, obviously in Argentina, Jody Richard shared in an interview with Sky News. And I think he just wanted to touch base, just check that I was okay, just to sort of see how everyone was back home. According to reports, Richards, who used to teach Liam Payne at her performing arts company, Pink Productions, in Wolverhampton, shared that Payne text her two days before his demise to ask how she was doing. She told him she was at the gym with her son, and he simply replied, nice. Later, Payne sent her a photo of himself sitting on his hotel bed in Argentina with his hand on his head. Richards responded, sorry, just got home, X. She explained that they had been in touch almost every day for years, even though they didn't live near each other. Payne had always been there for her when she needed him. Richards shared that the last message she got from Liam Payne was early Wednesday morning. She had just arrived at work, and he told her he was chilling in Argentina. He seemed excited about his day, happy and healthy, with no signs that anything was wrong. Later, Richards received messages from friends asking her to confirm the news of his passing. She couldn't believe it and thought it might be fake, so she tried calling and texting him. Normally, his texts would be marked as read quickly, but this time they weren't. When she turned on the TV, it became clear that the news was real. Hey, Liam. Liam, 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 Liam. Oh my God, thank you so much. You're so crazy. Hey, Liam. Thank you, love you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. I always believed that Liam would make it, but never could speak. Never in my wildest dreams would have been He goes away for so long. Sorry. <laughs> Richards expressed her heartbreak over Payne's passing, calling it a terrible waste of life. She said he had so much ahead of him and was deeply loved by his family, friends, and everyone who knew him. His loss isn't just tragic for those close to him, but also for the world, where he was known as a beloved celebrity and pop star. Talking about his battles with mental health and substance overuse, Richards said that he always had help available when he needed it. From her perspective, he seemed to be in a good place, both in his personal life and his career. He had exciting new projects on the way, and he appeared happy. After Liam Payne's passing, fans and celebrities took to social media to pay tribute to him. Some fans even held a vigil outside of Casa Sur Palmero Hotel in his memory. Simon Cowell, who played a key role in creating One Direction on The X Factor back in 2010, decided to postpone Britain's Got Talent auditions following Payne's demise. Liam stepped in, you brought it back together. That's what bands do. Simon Cowell breaking his silence on Liam Payne's death by revealing sweet memories with the star he helped make famous. Based on talent, absolutely incredible. One massive, fat, almighty yes. In a lengthy tribute on Instagram, the X Factor judge tells fans he feels devastated, heartbroken, and empty after Liam's unexpected death from a fall off a hotel balcony in Argentina on Wednesday. Simon rattles off a list of words that come to mind when he thinks of Liam. Kind, funny, sweet, thoughtful, talented, humble, and focused. He goes on to share a story from his final visit with Liam last year, writing, We reminisced about all the fun times we had together, and how proud you were to be a dad. He then addresses the bond of One Direction, calling them brothers, before ending his message by saying Liam left the world too soon. Rest in peace, my friend. Meanwhile, his friend and fellow musician Rita Ora honored him by displaying his picture on stage while performing their song, For You, during a concert in Japan on Thursday. As the investigation into Liam Payne's passing continues, a 911 call obtained by the BBC revealed that the hotel's head receptionist reported a guest who was high on narcotics and trashing their room. 
The caller also told police that the guest might be in danger. Payne had shared last year that he was 100 days sober after a stay in rehab. Initial reports indicated that Payne fell from the third floor of the hotel in Argentina. But as more details emerge, things are getting clearer. New information includes shocking photos of his wrecked room and evidence suggesting substance use. The first official autopsy results revealed by the prosecutor's office show Payne had 25 injuries consistent with a fall from a great height including severe head trauma and internal and external bleeding. The authorities stated that there were no signs of anyone else being involved, but they were still investigating the case as a suspicious death, as part of standard procedure. According to the prosecutor's office, it seemed that Payne was alone at the time of the fall and might have been experiencing some kind of episode related to substance overuse. City police reported finding what appeared to be narcotics, alcohol, and several broken items and furniture in the room, though they were awaiting confirmation from experts. They also mentioned that when they searched the room after Payne's demise, they found it in complete disarray, with medication scattered across the space. Police previously releasing pictures showing drugs found inside his room along with a smashed TV. In the hotel atrium where Payne fell, police discovered a bottle of whiskey, a lighter, and a cell phone, and they collected fingerprints from the scene. Inside Payne's luxury hotel room, located in the Palmero district, they found over-the-counter medications, energy packs, and clonazepam, a medication used for anxiety. The police also noted that the room was in total chaos, with many items broken, and they gathered additional evidence like fingerprints, a notebook, and a passport for further analysis. The balcony area was closely inspected to determine how Payne might have accessed it. Before Payne's fall, a hotel employee had called emergency services, asking for help with a guest who was trashing his room and appeared to be under the influence of narcotics or alcohol. Listen to an audio obtained from the Buenos Aires Security Ministry related to the call made that night. Bueno, hasta cuando está consciente, eh, rompe, está rompiendo toda la habitación y bueno, necesitamos que manden a alguien, por favor. ¿Bajo efectos de alcohol y estupefaciente, no, señor? Sí, correcto. ¿Cómo se llama el hotel? Casa Sur Palermo. Y necesitamos que nos envíen a alguien urgente porque, bueno, yo no sé si corre riesgo la vida del huésped. Eh, está en una habitación que que tiene balcón y bueno, estamos un poco con temor de que haga algo que, que le ponga en riesgo su vida. Payne had been honest for a long time about his struggles with mental health and addiction before his passing. Um, it was wild, but it was like the only way you could get frustration out in the day or being in tra like trapped. And, and you know, I spoke about to somebody about this and, and, and in child development, you know, as a teen, the one thing you need is is freedom to make choices and freedom to do stuff. And it was the one thing that, although we could do anything we wanted, it seemed from the outside that we were always locked in a room at night and then it would be car, hotel room, stage, sing, locked. Mm. So it was like they pulled the dust cloth off, let us out for a minute and then, woohoo! And then it's like back underneath here and I'm like, good. In a 2019 interview, he shared his concerns about the lack of proper mental health care in the entertainment industry, saying, There have been a lot of people in trouble with mental health that aren't really getting the help that they need, and I think that's a bit of a problem in our industry. It's the same S. That happens to everyone. That's been happening since the 70s. You know what the traps are, and if you're lucky enough, like me, to be able to get out of that scenario and back into a sense of normality, then you know it's a bit different. He also likened performing on stage to being a Disney World character actor, stating, It was like putting the Disney costume on. I was drunk quite a lot of the time because there was no other way to get your head around what was going on. I mean, it was fun, we had an absolute blast, but there were certain parts of it where it just got a little bit toxic. In a 2021 episode of the Diary of a CEO podcast, Payne revealed that he had experienced thoughts of ending his own life during his time in One Direction. I was worried how far my rock bottom was going to be, he admitted. Where's rock bottom for me? And you would have never seen it. I'm very good at hiding it. No one would have ever seen it. There is some stuff that I have definitely never, never spoken about. It was really, really, really severe, and it was a problem. And it was only until I saw myself after that, I was like, right, I need to fix myself. I was worried how far my rock bottom was gonna be. Where's rock bottom for me? And you would never have seen it. I'm very good at hiding it. No one would have ever seen it, but rock bottom. It... So what do you think about all this? Can there be more to the story behind Liam Payne's tragic demise? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. That's all for today. 
Make sure to hit like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more videos like this.